Thank you for supporting Honest News Network. Matthew, the seventh chapter, beginning with verse 13. I believe that this is primarily the the one thing that all, or should say most, of God's people avoid. They're willing to do everything but this. And that's why the majority of the church is going to be left behind. They're willing to do all the religious things. They're willing to read their Bibles, pray religiously, go to church. But there are few, few, Jesus said, that are going to find the narrow gate, the straight gate that leads to life. Matthew chapter 7, beginning with verse 13, let's open in prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for showing us, Lord, the way to life that there is no other way to life. We thank you, Lord, that you've kept us on that straight and narrow, leading to life. We pray, Lord, that your people will have ears to hear what the Spirit is saying. We pray they will not shrink back, Lord, but that they will be willing to overcome. We ask that you bless and anoint as we minister your word. In the name of Jesus, Lord, we pray. Amen. Enter ye in at the straight gate. Peter was asking Jesus, are there few that be saved? Enter in. Strive to enter in at the straight gate. For wide is the gate and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. And many there be which go thereat. Right? Many are going down the broad road that leads to destruction. But Jesus said few would find the narrow gate. Notice it's something you've got to seek for. You've got to find the narrow gate. Because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Many times we hear, constantly actually hearing all the time, you're too narrow-minded, right? Well, the way's narrow. It's straight. It's narrow. Isn't it interesting how when they talk about the perverted, the contrast to being a pervert, or being perverted, is to be straight. Even the world knows that. Amen? They talk about the difference between a what they call a gay person, what the Bible calls a homosexual, or effeminate, Think about it, people. The contrast to the homosexual or the perverted is straight. Amen. Straight is the gate. 
Amen. You can't be perverted. You can't be a queer. Amen. God destroyed two cities because of this sin. And he said, as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be the coming of the Son of Man. Amen. As it was the time of Sodom and Gomorrah, it will be when the Lord returns. So if you're seeing the world being taken over by homosexuality, perverts, there's a reason why. Jesus said it was going to happen. Still yet, the way to life, eternal life, is through the straight gate, the narrow way that leadeth to life. Amen? It's not for the free thinker. It's not for the open-minded. It's not for the philosopher. Amen. It's a narrow way that leadeth to life. It's a straight gate that leadeth to life. And few be there be that find it. Few. And then Jesus goes on to say, look, there are going to be some false prophets. They're going to come to you in sheep's clothing. But inwardly they are ravening wolves. What's Jesus saying? There's going to be false prophets that are going to arise that are going to say just the opposite of what Jesus said. They're going to twist the word and they're going to say, the homosexual can come in. The pervert can come in. Amen. That's what we're seeing today. The false ministers, the false prophets, ministers of Satan, saying that the queer, the effeminate, that they can come in to the kingdom. But they're false prophets, right? It's what the Word of God says. They're false prophets. They're they're. Inwardly, they are ravening wolves. They're the ones that say, we're, we're here, we're queer, and we're in your face, and we want your children. And we're going to find your children. Even at the rest stops, we're going to meet your children in the bathrooms. They come right out and say that. They want our children, folks. They're ravening wolves. They want our children, and they're adopting children today. Are you listening to me? They want to warp their thinking. They want to molest them. They want to train them up in a perverted way. Are you listening to me? And you've got those like Will Smith coming out with a son that now says he's a homosexual. Well, we always knew he was. It's about time he admits what he is. Amen. He needs help, folks. He needs a real dad that'll tell him the truth. Amen? There was a time when Will Smith distanced himself from his son. He was ashamed of him. But now he's embracing him. His son took off the girly clothes, took off the dresses, but now he's back at it again. Because straight is the na- uh, way, and narrow is the way. It's a narrow and a straight gate. And few there be that find it. Society today does not discourage the homosexual lifestyle. And I hate to call it a lifestyle because it's not a lifestyle. 
There's nothing about it that's life. It's death. Amen. But this is a generation that embraces it. I remember years ago when they were ashamed to come out of the shadows. Are you listening to me? There was a time when they were underground and they wouldn't come out. We've come a long ways, people. We've come a long ways to where now they've even got a president that is supporting international protection for the LGBTQ, whatever they are. They're perverts. And they're not interested in just their little group, which is becoming a big group. But how many know that they're interested in perverting the whole world? They have an agenda. There's billionaires that are queer, that are homosexual, that are perverts. Are you listening to this preacher? I want you to understand something, brothers and sisters, as much as even I hear the church fighting this truth. That wicked, that man of sin that is about to be revealed, it says he has no desire for a woman. It does not say he does not have a desire for a man. It said he's going to be a vile individual, a beast. Are you listening to this preacher? I believe God's people have become too relaxed when it comes to this spirit. And it is a spirit. Are you listening? It's a perverted spirit. It's unclean. And Jesus said when he comes, that spirit is going to be here over the whole earth as it was in the days of Lot. Amen? We better listen to what the Spirit of God is saying. I'm going to tell you right now, brothers and sisters, pornography, without question, is a a way into this. We better listen. We better take heed. We better do what Jesus said. We better come out from among them and be separate. And touch not the unclean thing. Amen. Have nothing to do with the unfruitful works of darkness. Rather, reprove them. It's it's a shame to even speak of those things which they do in darkness. How many know a minister of the gospel should never be sharing the things they do in darkness? Shouldn't even be looking. Shouldn't even be having knowledge of those things. Dear God, If you have in the past, ask the Lord to wash your mind. Amen. And never go there again. Come out of her. Filthiness. Amen. Filthiness. That whore of Babylon. Luke chapter 17, verse 33. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life shall preserve it. Interesting how the Lord goes on to say in another book, he says, remember Lot's wife. In a different gospel, remember Lot's wife. Whosoever shall seek to save his life shall lose it. Remember Lot's wife. 
Amen. There's a way that seems right unto a man. But they are the ways of death and destruction. There are few that finds the narrow way that leads to life. You got to find that narrow gate. You got to seek for that narrow gate. <coughs> in studying, in studying these words in the original Greek, Matthew chapter 7, verse 13. Enter ye in at the straight gate, and wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction. That word leadeth in the original Greek has to do with put to death. Now let, let, me, let me talk to you here. The wages of sin is death. The Bible calls the lake of fire, the second death. Listen to me. The broad road leads to destruction and death. But let's take a look at the next verse. Straight is the gate and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. And few there be that find it. Again, the, the word leadeth in the Greek, has to do with putting to death. How many know if you're going to live with Jesus for eternity, you've got to take up your own cross? Jesus was not mincing words. You see, they understood what he was talking about back there when he said to them to take up your own cross. Today, we don't understand what that has to do with because you got people wearing crosses around their necks. You got churches with crosses on their steeples. Today, the cross is glorified like a good thing. And yet the scripture says, cursed is the man that hangeth on a tree. The cross is a curse. Are you listening? Jesus was talking about the death to the self life. You think you're going to overcome? You think you're going to be able to live for Jesus if you don't deny yourself, take up your own cross daily, and follow him? Don't fool yourselves. You've got to die to that self life. Revelation chapter 12, verse 10. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, these folks don't sound like they're ashamed to me. Now has come salvation and strength in the kingdom of our God, in the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. How did they overcome? They overcame by the precious blood of the Lamb. That is salvation. That's how we're saved. By the washing of the blood of Jesus. Amen? But it doesn't stop there. And by the word of their testimony. They didn't overcome with their own words. They overcame with his word. And they loved not their lives unto the death. The narrow gate that leadeth unto life. They loved not their lives unto the death. They were willing to die to the self-life. You look up the Hebrew word for Enoch. It means to self-strangle. Study it. Learn for yourselves. 
His name means teacher. His name means to self-strangle. God taught Enoch how to die to the self-life. Amen. And God has a few in this hour. He's teaching us how to crucify that self-life. And there are few that are willing to enter in thereat. Amen? You won't hear this being preached in the churches today. This is not a popular message. Death to the self-life is not a message you're going to hear being preached. It doesn't tickle the ears. Amen. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't make you want to shout. But let me tell you, it will make you free. See, the church began to grow cold when they stopped putting the flesh on the altar. Amen? The altar's gone. The first thing they confiscated from the temple and took down to Babylon was the altar. The prophets of Baal destroyed the altar broke it down as they were calling on their gods. The scripture says that Elijah repaired the altar. Amen. He obeyed God. He built an altar. He repaired the altar. And what does the scripture say? Then the fire of God fell. If there's ever been an hour that the altar needs to be repaired, restored, it's now, people. How many know the flesh is enmity with God? They that are in the flesh cannot please God. These are not my words. They're in the Bible. That Bible that you say you love. The Bible that you say you read. The church today is seeking to save its life. My pastor said years ago, he said there's plenty of soldiers at the cross. He says, but where are the soldiers of the cross? Amen. Where are the soldiers of the cross? Those that walk in the spirit, live in the spirit, live in that experience, that overcoming life in Christ Jesus. The life in Christ Jesus has made me free. From sin and death, there's victory in Jesus, brothers and sisters, but not if you're walking in the flesh. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. There is an overcoming life. Amen. There's a life of victory if we are walk in the Spirit. Few there be that find the narrow way, the narrow gate that leads to life. If you study out these Greek words, you'll find that this has to do with the birth canal. Amen. You study this out, you'll find that this has to do with a birth canal. 
How many know the scripture says in Revelation 12 that the woman, the church, is with child? And that she is going to give birth to a man child. Within the church is coming forth overcomers that love not their lives unto the death. Unto the death. The scripture says they that have the fear of death all their lifetime subject to bondage. I've told you many times that Satan is going to rule through his man of sin, through that antichrist, that wicked, that the beast kingdom will be ruled with the fear of death. Look what the fear of death is doing in America right now. Are you listening? Look what the fear of death is doing all over this world. Do you think that you're going to overcome if you're not free of the fear of death? They loved not their lives unto the death. Even as Jesus Christ passed through death, brothers and sisters, we must pass through death. Amen. This word, leadeth, means to put to death. Leadeth to life. Few there be that find it. Put to death. Amen. Hallelujah. You want to really live? You want to enter into the kingdom? You got to crucify the flesh. Even Paul the Apostle said, It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. The life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Amen. Deliverance from the flesh. Dear God, in overcoming life, that's what Jesus went to the cross for. Not for us to play church. Not for us to play church. This has to do with victory. Deliverance. And that's what we see here. I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation. A loud voice. Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ. For the accuser of our brethren is cast down, which accused them before our God day and night. Therefore, rejoice, ye heavens, and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he hath but a short time. What does it say? When the dragon saw that he was cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman, the church, which brought forth the man-child. That's plain. That is clear enough. That is plain. If you understand that that woman is the church, the blood washed. Amen. The wise virgins that slept all the way up to midnight. They did not awake out of their sleep till midnight. 
That's three and a half years into the middle of the tribulation hour. Midnight. It's your choice if you're going to be an overcomer or if you're going to be left behind and end up in the tribulation hour. If you're still here after the bride is gone, the scripture says that there's going to be persecution. The church is going to be persecuted. It says that she is going to flee. God is going to give the church two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness. She fled into the wilderness, into her place, where she's nourished for time, times and a half time, three and a half years, from the face of the serpent. The church is going to face great persecution. And with that fear and that terror, the church is going to flee from the face of the serpent. Supernaturally, God is going to protect his church. But why would you want to be left behind when there is a way to escape? Jesus said, when you begin to see these things coming to pass, Look up, your redemption draws near. He said, watch and pray that you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things and stand before the Son of Man. He has provided a way of escape. But how many or how few are finding the narrow gate that leads to life. In Proverbs 25, it says, it's the glory of God to conceal a thing, but it's the honor of kings to search it out. Are you listening? How many kings does the Lord have today? Through the blood of the Lamb, he's made us priests and kings. Where are the noble kings of the Lord? He is king of kings and lord of lords. The overcomer is a king under the king of kings. A royal priesthood. Hallelujah. Where are the kings that are searching it out? Amen. To find that narrow way. To find that gate that leads to life. Blessed be his name. Oh, I feel the presence of the Lord. We take this too lightly, the message of the overcomer. You don't hear any ministers preaching on it hardly. And the ones that do speak on this topic, they're usually confused. I've yet to find, in all my searching, a preacher that understands the overcoming life. It's sad. It is a sad, sad hour. I thank God for my spiritual training. It wasn't easy. Many times I wanted to run. There were times my pastor said to me, there's no bars on these windows. Many times, brothers and sisters, I wanted to flee. And God revealed to me, 
You're running from the cross, son. You're running away from the cross. You see, anything that goes against the flesh is the cross. Anything that goes against the flesh is the cross. That flesh doesn't want to die. That flesh is looking for a way out. Not to mention the demons that are looking for a way out. Amen? When the ark of God was placed with Dagon, the scripture says that Dagon fell down. When they found Dagon laying on the ground, they found its palms on the threshold of the door. Why? Because whatever was inside of that stone idol was trying to find its way out. I want you to understand something. The devils believe and they tremble. Are you listening? They use objects. Demons will work through objects. That's how that image of the beast is going to speak. Demon power. I want you to understand something, brothers and sisters. Satan cannot be in the same place where God is. So wherever you see the devil taking over today, God's not there. That ought to be a warning to you. If there's strife in the building you're in, where you worship God, that God's not there. Because where the Lord is, there's liberty. Where the Lord is, there's deliverance, there's freedom. There's life. There's victory where the Lord is. The devil cannot freely move about where the Lord is. Amen? Praise God. Is Jesus Christ Lord of your life? Is Jesus Christ Lord in your life? If there's strife, he's not Lord Do you hear what I just said? I said if there's strife, he's not Lord there. I've never hated the flesh more than I hate the flesh now, people. I hate the flesh. That spiritual man, that man of God, I hate the flesh. There's a groaning to be free. Are you listening? We groan within ourselves to be free of flesh, to be free to serve the Lord in victory. Jesus has provided for us the victory. But few there be that find the narrow gate that leadeth to life. Few there be that finds the narrow gate that leadeth to life. Many today going down the broad road that leads to destruction. Are you listening? The Lord told me this. The Lord told me, he said, in this hour, they're either going to flee to me 
or they're going to flee from me. You can't do both. You're either going to run to Jesus or you're going to run away from Jesus. Will you also go away in this time of the falling away? There's got to be a falling away first before that wicked can be revealed. Will you also fall away? Will you also go away? Thank you for your support of Honest News Network. In the name of the Lord, though Satan rages, we cannot be defeated. We've got 